Hello and thanks for tuning in on episode 2 of the Flying Game Project in JavaScript, React and 3JS. On the second part of our journey, we'll start to build the setup of the airplane and the updated camera logic that will follow the plane as it moves in a specific direction. This is where we left the project last time, we created and refined the landscape model and now we'll hop back in VS Code to start building the airplane component. We'll start by creating and adding an airplane component to our app. The component was for the most part generated by GLTF to JSX. The only addition I've added so far are these two refs, one for the top level group that contains all the meshes of the airplane and another one for the helix which we're going to animate later on during the tutorial. And we now have a plane. Look at how beautiful, oh wait, you probably can see it because it's hidden behind the landscape and it's much smaller than the surrounding environment. But indeed, we successfully included the model in the scene. And this, by the way, this is a beautiful model that I took from Sketchfab from an artist named Beryl Basak. I encourage you to check out and support all artists that share their models with the public and make these projects accessible to everyone. And moving back on VS Code, I've made a use frame callback. And as a quick reminder, this callback will be executed on every frame before rendering the frame. And it's the standard way of computing any logic that should live in a game loop. And we also have a plane position vector, which will be needed in other components further down the pipeline, which is why we're exporting it outside of the airplane. And if we understand that this is a terrible way of approaching states shared between components, but I'm willing to make the assumption that the viewer knows better and that in a production environment, you will make smarter decisions. Hopefully. In React Tree Fiber and also in Tree.js, the easiest way of setting an object position is to just add a position property and it will be immediately reflected in the scene. In our project, however, we're going to use a different approach. We'll have to chain a bunch of transformations together like rotations, scales and translations and the easiest way of representing and chaining a lot of these transformations together is to use the matrix format. We're resorting to matrices because the nature of the transforms that we'll have to apply is slightly more complicated than what we can achieve by setting the simple rotation and position properties. And if we do decide to opt into creating a transformation matrix ourselves, we'll have to tell Tree.js that it doesn't have to automatically create a matrix based on the meshes properties like rotation and scale. So here we are effectively telling Tree.js to ignore these properties and instead let us control the creation of the matrix ourselves. And this matrix is extremely simple. We're starting with the identity matrix, which is basically no transform. It means that the object remains in, in its original state. Then by multiplying another matrix on top of another one, we can chain transformations together. So in this case, the identity matrix, which is the one where no transform is applied, it's being multiplied by the translation matrix. If we combine these two together, we're simply going to translate the object to plane position. And it's not even necessary in this case to multiply an identity matrix with a translation matrix because it's a bit like doing 0 plus 5. The 0 is redundant. We could simply remove the identity matrix and just keep the translation one and reach the same effect. But I'm keeping the multiplication to remind ourselves that we can change transforms together by multiplying a bunch of matrices. And if you reload the project, you'll now find that the plane is being placed exactly where we wanted. This is the plane position origin that we defined inside the airplane script. And now we'll do something similar with the matrix of the camera, but we'll first have to remove the orbit controls from our scene. Okay, this is decode for the camera matrix, and I'll first go over a simple explanation of what's happening here, and then I'll try to fry your brain. The simple explanation is that we are first translating the camera such that it's at the center of the plane, exactly at the plane position. And by default, the camera will look forward. So in step one, we'll be in this situation where the camera is at the center of the plane and looking forward. In step two, we are rotating the camera around the x-axis such that it points downward. And then we'll get in the setup that we're seeing here in step two, where the camera will be placed here looking downward. Step three, this is a new translation where the camera will be placed slightly above and in the back side of the plane, but still looking downward because we have rotated it in step two. 
This simple explanation is completely fine and can let you do anything that you could do with a camera matrix. But since we're talking about the matrix, why not take the red pill and really try to understand what, what happens behind the simulation? What if I told you that when you move in a game, you're not really moving? It's the entire game that is moving towards you to give you the impression that you're the one moving. Imagine for a moment that the camera matrix is always fixed forever at the center of the planet and will always look forward forever and you just can't change it. How would you give the impression that you are moving around the scene such that this box gets closer to you? Well, you can move it in the, oppo in the opposite direction of the movements that you're trying to give the impression of doing. So if you want to move forward, another way of giving this, this impression while keeping the camera fixed in place at the origin of the universe is by moving the world itself towards the camera, like in this case where this box is moving in this position, so the opposite side of the movement that we're trying to simulate. And this is the interesting idea behind a camera matrix. So in step zero, imagine that the world origin and the camera itself is just here at zero, zero, zero. There's our plane and this is our landscape. What if we move the entire landscape, so the mountains and the plane, in this direction such that we get to step one where the camera still remained at zero 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 but our plane was moved and the landscape was also moved to give the impression that now the camera is placed at the center of the plane let's keep on playing with this idea now imagine that from step one where the camera where the camera is at the center of the plane we are literally rotating the universe, rotating the world around the origin here. And we are rotating it as we're doing in step two, such that the plane is slightly slanted in this direction. And ironically, also the landscape is completely rotated now like this. And again, the camera remained fixed in place at zero, 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 and nothing at all changed. This was our step two. And now for step three, we are moving the camera from here to here, but we're not really moving it. Again, what we're doing instead is moving the plane from here to here, such that the camera remains exactly at the same position, but the plane and the rest of the world moved such that now that we're looking at it from this direction, it looks like we have placed the camera in a specific point of our world, but in reality, we have placed the world in a specific point that looks good on our camera. Some people will probably be against me explaining things this way for a lot of obvious reasons, but it's interesting to look at a camera matrix this way. When we are inside our shaders, all of the objects in our scene are multiplied by the camera matrix. This will move these objects in such a way that it will give us the impression that we're the ones moving in the world, but in reality, these objects are moving and they're moving around us to give us the impression of movement. Okay, our little camera detour costed us almost five minutes. I hope it wasn't too boring. It's a concept that I always found fascinating and I wanted to share that with the community. But going back into the practical stuff, I've taken the reference of the helix and I'm rotating it on the Z axis by decreasing the rotation.z property on each frame. The helix in the Blender file is slightly misaligned, so it won't be spinning like a normal helix, but since it moves so fast, you're not really going to spot the bug. I will keep it as is and pretend it doesn't exist like we often do in production. And finally, at the top of the file, I'm moving the plane position on each frame by adding a small offset in the minus Z direction, the direction that the plane is facing. And voila, the plane is moving, the helix is animated, and the camera follows the plane. We can't move it yet, and we'll fix that on the next episode, since this one got a bit longer than I expected. But our setup is working perfectly fine, and we have all we need now to focus on the controls. So stay tuned for part 3 of the project, I hope you enjoy the journey so far, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers!